It was a bitter contest, but in the end, the favourite came out on top. Liz Truss has been elected leader of Britain's Conservative Party and will become the next UK Prime Minister. The announcement follows two months of intense campaigning sparked by the resignation of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Truss, who is currently the UK's Foreign Minister, defeated her rival Rishi Sunak. She'll follow Margaret Thatcher and Theresa May to become Britain's third female Premier. Truss called on her party to rally around her to fight the many crises plaguing the country. It's an honour to be elected as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. During this leadership campaign, I campaigned as a Conservative and I will govern as a Conservative. <laughs> And my friends, we need to show that we will deliver over the next two years. So she's not even in the post and already seemingly running out of time. The most pressing issue facing her is the rising cost of living in the United Kingdom. Energy prices and shopping bills are getting more and more expensive. Many families are expected to struggle to make ends meet this coming winter. Truss will also have to settle a series of industrial disputes and tackle foreign policy challenges that include the war in Ukraine and, last but not least, implementing Brexit. There's not a lot of choice when Fiona is making sandwiches for her children, but she has to be really careful when buying food. The cost of living has gone up. And everything is so expensive, like the bread, the milk, it's gone up at least by 30%. It's hard when you've got a family of four. But it's not only food prices. A bigger concern for her are energy bills. I will not be using my gas cooker in the winter, um, just to the fact that my gas is going to be a lot more expensive this year, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to afford it. It'll just be easy food that doesn't take up too much gas and electric. But how to keep the children warm once colder weather comes is worrying her even more. We have to wrap up in the house, wear extra clothing in the winter instead of putting on the heating. I do try and work full time, but I still, I still seem to struggle. Life for Fiona is a fight, but she fears this coming winter things might be getting even harder for her and the children. At this central London hospital, another shift is getting underway for the ambulance crews. Every day they're bringing in more patients than the emergency room can handle. We're just struggling to even get people into the doors of the a and &E, and we're having to treat them in the back of the ambulance. And some of these time-critical illnesses, like strokes and heart attacks, are just simply not being seen in time. This leads to waiting ambulances stacking up outside the hospital doors in the end, endangering people's lives. Because of these delays at hospital, we're sitting here unable to answer the 999 calls that are coming in. I've personally witnessed deaths where we have been to someone who might have called for chest pain, and 12, 15 hours later, we've turned up to the house, and this person is deceased. Understaffed, underfunded, and close to breaking down, these professionals are dealing with the crisis of the National Health Service on a daily basis. We're in the middle of the biggest staffing crisis the NHS has ever seen in its history. On top of that, this government has no credible plan to actually fix these problems. Aaron himself is doubtful whether he'll be able to carry on in the job for much longer. A day out on the beach, for many Londoners this means a trip to Brighton. But swimmers should think again. On rainy days, raw sewage is being pumped out of this drainage pipe straight into the sea. This is Victorian technology. This is 150 years old. What we're experiencing in this country is a lack of investment in our infrastructure, which means these are being used on a constant, regular basis. This happens across the country. For years now, he and his fellow activists have been fighting against the water companies responsible for this practice, so far without success. You're surfing with uh, all of the things that come out of people's toilets. You know, you've got sanitary towels, you've got the paper and everything else that goes in with it. Uh, and, and also, you know, uh, feces as well. Raw sewage on Britain's beaches. This is a nation that has more than one crisis on its hands. 
Looks like Liz Truss has got her work cut out for her and to walk us through how she might go about tackling all these simultaneous crises, I'm pleased to bring in Catherine Bernard. She's a professor of EU law and employment law at Trinity College at Cambridge University. She's also a deputy director of the think tank UK in a changing Europe. Ms. Bernard, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the day tonight with us. Thank you. Liz Truss is often compared to Margaret Thatcher. She personally says she doesn't like that comparison and that she's very much her own person. So what kind of a prime minister is she going to be? Well, uh, she may say now that she doesn't like to be compared with Margaret Thatcher, but she's gone to a lot of trouble to try to mimic or echo Margaret Thatcher. And it's been very odd throughout the entire contest to have two um, pretenders for the prime minister's throne. And they've both harked back to Margaret Thatcher, who was prime minister 30 years ago. They all want to wear the mantle of Margaret Thatcher. And she certainly will follow in Margaret Thatcher's shoes of uh, she wants to be small state, tax cutting conservative. But as your report has just shown, the fact is that the state needs to have a huge amount of money pumped into it. And yet Liz Trust has promised tax cuts. And this is why uh, there's a lot of concern on the markets about how she's actually going to deliver on the promise of cutting taxes while also fixing, for example, the National Health Service. Uh, let's talk about how you think she will go about delivering to the British people. She really emphasized that she was going to deliver, deliver, deliver in her acceptance speech. Any idea how she plans to do that? Well, it's all very well saying deliver, deliver, deliver. But in fact, um, she's given very, very little away about how she's actually going to do this. At the start of her campaign, she said she was going to give no handouts. She was going to focus on tax cuts. But of course, as the reality of the energy crisis looms, she's now talking about doing something about the energy crisis, but she won't tell us what she's going to do. Now, it's quite clear that civil servants have been working on a package of measures that they can present to her once she becomes prime minister. And she promises that the nation will be told what she's going to do by the end of the week. But of course, that's only one part of the package because she still wants to do tax cuts. The only way this can be delivered is by massive government borrowing. And the levels of government borrowing could be really substantial, possibly just to pay for the uh, energy crisis, 100 billion. And if you think about that, in order to pay for the furlough scheme during the pandemic, that costs the country 70 billion. And so what she needs to spend to try and assist people with the energy crisis is 30 billion more than was spent on the furlough scheme. How does the British public feel about her? Because she was voted into the post by some 80,000 members of her own party. How does the general public feel about her and her fairly vague approach to all these crises? Yeah, the general public is not that warm about her. They think she is somewhat out of touch uh, and they really don't have much confidence in her ability to deliver. Indeed, looking at the figures, 12% of Britons think she'll be a great or good prime minister, but 52% um, percent of Britons um, in a YouGov survey thought she would be terrible or at least poor. And so there's not a lot of faith in her. And the very fact that she is um, seen as the heir to Boris Johnson, a uh, good thing for party members, who, many of whom think Boris Johnson should never have resigned in the first place, but not so good for the country, because the country clearly is rather suspicious of Boris Johnson and his behaviour while he was in office. Something people are suspicious about as well is whether or not she will have what it takes to implement Brexit. She voted for Maine in 2016. So what kind of challenges await her there, you think? So many. But first and foremost um, is uh, what to do about Northern Ireland. If you remember, the Northern Ireland Protocol was agreed between Boris Johnson and uh, the EU. And the effect of the Northern Ireland Protocol was to have a border down the Irish Sea, essentially separating Northern Ireland from the rest of Great Britain. And the Conservatives are now saying this is totally unacceptable. Liz Truss is um, being a front runner to say this is totally unacceptable. And she has been pushing the so-called Northern Ireland Protocol Bill through Parliament, 
It's gone through the Commons, the lower house, and it's due to go to the Lords, the upper house, um, at the end of October. And this bill essentially rips up the Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, which uh, is an international treaty uh, which was agreed with the EU in good faith two years ago. And so she is putting the country on a collision course with the EU because the EU cannot uh, accept that the UK unilaterally breaks its commitments under an international treaty with the EU.